Hello, my name is Milan Stanko. I'm an associate professor in field development and production engineering. I'm going to talk about, give you a summary of what uh, the research my group and I have done regarding uh, decision support tools for early phase design of offshore hydrocarbon fields. So just to give you a bit of a background, in an offshore oil and gas field, we have the following phases typically. And uh, we are dealing mainly with the project planning phase, in which, which is relatively short compared to the rest. We have to take a lot of uh, decisions in short time. And then we have to live with those decisions for a long time after in operations for a very long time. And usually with limited time and a lot of uncertainty. So we have here in the timeline, we also have these decision gates is where we have to take decisions. We have a lot of information and we have calculated some key performance indicators. And based on that, we have to take decisions and decide which options to cut or which, uh, with which options to continue. That's what this chart uh, shows a bit. We have uh, uh, some information about the subsurface we have gathered, about properties, about volumes. We have some ways that we can use to develop the field. We have some scheduling in place, how we're going to produce these fluids. And based on that, we calculate some uh, economic indicators and we calculate also some impact studies. And then we have to decide and cut some of the options that we think are less attractive based on these KPIs and continue with those that we think are the most attractive. Also in this picture, in this value chain, we have to include nowadays, like what is the emissions that we're going to get from the field, CO2 emissions to sea and to uh, air, energy efficiency and other environmental considerations. So something that happens is that uh, during the project planning phase, I have initially have a, everything is open, so the system is not defined at all, so I can make a lot of changes. Uh, and then the cost is relatively low because there is nothing in place yet. But as time progresses, then features are getting locked in place and then it becomes more and more expensive to make changes. So some challenges we have in this phase, and I call it this the early phase um, in field planning, we have a lot of uncertainty, we have a lot of manual processes, and uh, we have a lot of people working in silos that uh, is, is sometimes difficult to uh, communicate between them. Uh, because of that, then the uncertainty sometimes is dropped when you proceed from decision gate to decision gate. It's not uh, carried because it's uh, quite a, a tedious and heavy process. And we have different problems with different orders of magnitude and orders of importance. And on top of that, we have the variability of the product price of gas and uh, oil that they can change and they are affected in a short term. So what we try to do is we try to analyze all the information available and using methods like numerical modeling, like uh, probabilistic analysis, decision uh, making and or using data points, we try to process all of that and compute a base that will be used to take decisions later. As an example, I will show this uh, case from, uh, I took it from a paper from a Brazilian project where they give equations for uh, calculating economic value. That is the sum of all the cash flows per year, including revenue and all the costs that you have. So if you see if uh, the solution to this problem, if I want to develop this field in an optimal manner, let's say I have no uncertainty, then you see this uh, plot gives you the uh, color, a color chart of the economic value of the project, the net present value. And on the y-axis, you have the field plateau rate. And on the x-axis, you have the number of producing wells. So if you were using, you assume that there is no uncertainty in the subsurface and no uncertainty any other place, then you will see it will be most optimal. You will get the highest value by producing 170 something thousand barrels per day and around maybe nine or 10 wells. But then if it turns out that later the reservoir is smaller or it's bigger, then you have this uh, figure in which the values of number of wells and rates, they change significantly. And if you are developing the wrong rates and with the wrong number of wells, then you will get a very different economic revenue. So our group has been working on focusing on early phase, trying to find the best development strategy, meaning production and drilling schedule, the concept, the UR technique and abandonment time. And the main idea with that is not to find the, the, the ultimate way that the field will be developed, but to get some good numbers to have good estimates for, for example, processing capacities, total number of wells, production rates, and more importantly, if you should go forward or not with the project. Some constraints we have been looking at also are CO2 emissions and footprint or recovery factor. And uh, uncertainties, we have looked at price uncertainties, cost uncertainties, on subsurface uh, uncertainties, and, and others. So use cases, we have used all of these fields um, that uh, we either they are taking data from, from real data or they are 
synthetic cases based on the real fields. So we are using model-based optimization. We try to make a computer model of the system. And then with that computer model, we run optimization. We try to find the best way to produce that field. And with that, we try to identify the best way to do it. And that's the way we implement at the end. So we try to avoid making excessive simplifications that at the end, they, you end up with a, with a model that actually doesn't represent properly the field. Uh, we try to use data directly from commercial software, from complex models that uh, engineers use in the companies. And then with these points, we are trying to make proxy models. So we, we are developing these proxy models in terms of cost, that we have linear or nonlinear uh, equations that they kind of um, capture the, the value of cost and also of production performance. And then we use these points for, we use these proxy models for our optimization. The advantage is that they run fast and they not, might not be 100% accurate, but they car capture first order magnitude effects and that we, it runs fast and we can put uncertainty on top of it. So one example is this uh, production performance proxy. We use this production potential curves. So to the left, you have a very complex reservoir model with wells and with a transportation system. We, from there, we generate data, in this case, rate of oil with time, maximum rate of oil with time. And with that data, we create a proxy model, which is gives you the upper bound of how much you can produce at any value of cumulative production. And then we use that proxy model to generate production profiles without using the original heavy model to calculate the production profile. We also looked into how this curve of production potential if, is affected by number of wells, by heterogeneity in the wells, also by the scheduling of the wells, also depending on the size of the reservoir. And we apply the process of normalization that allows us actually to capture all of these effects and uh, sometimes it, it, it renders a unique curve. So our idea is to, instead of using the heavy models that are uh, black box typically and are difficult to optimize, we use this proxy model and that makes the optimization much faster and efficient. So we have tried two uh, methods to do the optimization, directly using the points using piecewise linear or using a nonlinear approach in which we fit to a polynomial and we use the polynomials in the optimization. We quantify uncertainty using sampling. We take samples of all the uncertain parameters and we run several optimizations with that. Or we have also done multi-level stochastic optimization. And to include integer variables that are not really continuous, we cannot include in the optimization, we use the probability or decision trees. Some results that we get here, you see to the right uh, the value of the project in the x-axis and the probability on the y-axis of each one of these values. And you can see you not only get that number, but actually you get a range of values with their associated probability. Uh, also to the left, you see at the top is the number of wells versus time that you should drill, uh, the optimal drilling schedule. And you see you don't get, again, not just one curve, but you get like a band of points. And at the bottom, you see the rate of oil with time. So that can help you to take a better decision on how to develop your field. Some takeaways of the research, uh, some more practical um, takeaways is that for oil fields, uh, the optimal yearly outtake we found for many cases actually is 12% of the total recoverable reserve, which can be used as a first approximation rule of thumb to find the, uh, how much I should produce from an offshore oil field. Uh, regarding the oil price, we have used, uh, here you see a plot of the oil price with time, and we have used trajectories or we have used a constant value. And we found that for, uh, we can use, um, we can find equivalent solutions if we, uh, to the, uh, to using a change in trajectory by assuming a constant oil price. So the value, economic value will be slightly different, but the optimal solution uh, will be very similar. So actually you could use that as a simplified approach of a constant oil price. Regarding the optimization, we have used points in two approaches using this SOS2 uh, variables and a log formulation. Uh, but then we found actually what runs faster is uh, nonlinear, uh, uh, using a nonlinear optimization, fitting the points to a polynomial and then using the polynomials directly in the optimization. It's much faster than using the, the points and you're solving a mixed integer linear problem. Uh, sampling worked fine for our models, uh, maybe also because they run in relatively short time. Uh, we also had some very nice uh, takeaways for the partners that came with their use cases. So for example, for Acker Solutions, they were implementing part of the, the method that uh, one of the students worked with in their software. For Lundin, they got some insight into what to do with optional wells. And for Acker BP, they got uh, some conditions that are required to favor 
solutions like power from shore and wind farm compared to traditional, more traditional power sources like gas turbine. Another thing is that designs, field designs that maximize profit usually are in, uh, a, a, there is a trade-off between those designs and designs that you have good uh, environmental performance. Uh, and you can use the CO2 tax to actually favor more profit over environmental performance or to favor more environmental performance over profit. Uh, but usually, if you want to reduce CO2, you also are, have to sacrifice forcefully NPV. But for that, uh, we found that using multi-objective optimization, in which you're not only optimizing on economic value, but you're also uh, optimizing in uh, environmental performance, actually can help you to find solutions that you will be sacrificing a bit of um, a project value, but then you're also going to gain a lot in environmental performance. So that's it. Thank you for your attention.